What's up YouTube, this is Tube Digger. MPC has now been updated to 2.3. This is a major, major update and brings some amazing new features to the MPC software and hardware. Before I begin this video, I just want to thank all my current subscribers, anyone that signed up for private tuition with myself. If you're interested in that, please contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com. So the first major update to the MPC Live and MPC X and MPC software, but particularly for the hardware or rather the firmware for your MPC X or MPC Live, is the addition of three fully fledged plug-in synth instruments that have been developed by Air Music Technology and they run in standalone mode. First of all, you might notice that I'm in standalone mode. I haven't got my controller mode icon up here. This is in standalone. But now we've got access to the plugin icon in the track field. So from the main page, we've got the plugin that we're actually using. We can press the plus to add an additional plugin. And you can see that we've got a tube synth plugin as the default. If we move the data wheel, you can now see that we've got MPC expansions and in the drop down we've now got air music technology and we've got baseline, electric and tube synth. Baseline is an emulation of a vintage analog mono synth. Electric is an emulation in basic terms of old electric pianos like Rhodes keyboards and tube synth which we're going to select and I'm going to show you now is a analog polysynth emulation. So the first page we see in the editor for tube synth is the oscillator and if you take a look at the bottom here we've got all these additional sub pages. If we press this arrow it will shift it along and we get access to all these other pages which are mostly effects. So let's go back to the oscillator page and I'll take you through the controls. We've got octave adjustment for both oscillators, we've got fine tuning for both oscillators now this is really interesting, we've got a wave shape that is variable. Okay, so we can sweep through the wave shape for both oscillators. And the most exciting thing about this is we can right automate this. And that's the same for all of these controls. Everything that you see on this page can be automated, including the sync and the quad. Quad is like a unison sort of effect, it thickens the sound makes it sound really wide. We've got a phase offset control for oscillator two. We've got a sub oscillator. We can also modify the wave shape for that. So this is absolutely amazing. The synth in the MPC 5000, as I said, I made a lot of good stuff with that synth, but you just couldn't automate many of the controls. There was only about seven parameters, I believe, that you could record automate them. So as you can see, this is already an amazing feature update for the MPC. Let's go to the mixer filter page. Again, all of these are fully automatable. We've got the oscillator 2 EQ. So we've got gain, frequency, drive, and key tracking. We've got a mixer here. We've got oscillator one, oscillator two, sub oscillator, ring modulation, and drive. We've got cutoff for a low pass filter. We've got resonance. We've got slope, saturation, envelope amount, key tracking and that's everything for the mixer and filter page. We've got an envelope page, so we've got a filter envelope, ADSR, attack, decay, sustain and release, and we've also got the same for the amp envelope. We've got a third envelope, so we've got a start level, start time, slope hold, slope release, and we can set a destination for that envelope to modulate. So we can modulate the pitch, oscillator two pitch, LFO one rate, LFO two rate, quad detune, oscillator one shape, oscillator two shape, oscillator one level, oscillator two level, and the ring modulation level. Let's go to LFO page. We've got two LFOs. We can change the shape for both to square, sign, saw up, saw down, pump, sample and hold, and drift, available for both. 
we can change the rate for both we can sync them to a time division or have them unsynced to Hertz uh, we can select a modulation source for the LFO so we can modulate the LFO itself with a filter envelope amp envelope oscillator one or oscillator two on the side here we've just got the same controls depth fade and we've got the modulation source depth over here next page is the setup page so over here we've got controller destinations we can set the velocity to control the amp the cutoff oscillator one shape oscillator two shape or oscillator one and two shape the next one we can set velocity two to modulate the same destinations uh, we've got depth controls for all of these you can set the mod wheel up on your external midi keyboard and we've also got aftertouch in the middle section here we've got the polyphony we can have up to four voices and we can choose three to re-trigger or legato we've got a pitch bend range so using a midi keyboard controller you can set the amount of semitones the pitch bend applies to your synth we've got glide time glide all doubling which is like a doubling up of the sound to get, make it sound thicker we've got a detune for that doubling as well over here we've got the output for shape width and the main level for the entire synth now we have to press this arrow here in the bottom right to access the last three tabs which is a dedicated chorus so we've got rate delay voice count which is three four or six We've got an LFO wave, so we can change the shape to triangle or sine. We've got depth, width, low cut, and a mix amount. Dedicated delay, we can choose time to be synced to a time division or unsynced to milliseconds. We've got damp control, ratio, feedback, resonance, high pass filter, mix amount, resonant frequency, and a width control. And the last one for tube synth, we've got a dedicated reverb unit we can choose from a hall stadium room or abstract reverb types we can adjust the time we've got a low cut high cut and a mix amount we've also got a compressor it's got threshold ratio output knee attack mix and release and this last one i think is just a basic coloring tool or eq for the entire synth because it's at the end of the chain and it gives you a high or a low frequency adjustment there so you can fine tune the overall sound of your synth patch and that is tube synth so now we're back on the main page let's now choose a different plugin let's choose baseline So as said, this is an emulation of a classic analog mono synth. So for baseline, the first tab, we've got oscillator, filter, and envelope. So we've got one oscillator. Again, this is a variable wave shape that we can choose. All these controls can be right automated. So I'm in right automation mode. Let's play my sequence back and I can just sweep through the waveform shape and the waveform will now change on the fly. And that's the same for the glide time. We've got a boost, sub octave, fifths, frequency, start phase, and envelope amount. A filter in the middle here. So we've got resonance, filter envelope amount, and a high pass cutoff. And as you can see, all of these are fully automatable. Over here, we've got envelope, amp attack, amp decay, filter decay, and pitch modulation next tab velocity so this is velocity master and chorus amp control filter control boost control envelope re-trigger on or off master output control with drive or overdrive which is like clipping okay clip or overdrive and we've got an amount there and we've got a bend range we've also got a chorus here we can select the rate depth mix and on or off as you can see that's all fully automatable again 
Second before last tab is a dedicated delay unit. Again, all of these are fully automatable. We've got the time control, we've got the feedback ratio, high pass filter, damp, sync on or off, mix amount, resonance, resonant frequency and width. And we've also got an on off switch there. The last tab for baseline, we've got a compressor, threshold, knee, ratio, attack, output, release, mix. We've got an on off switch for it. And again, we've got this hype effect here which adds high or low con frequency content to the final output of your sound and we can switch that on or off all fully automatable so that's baseline so the last plugin we're going to look at is electric and this is an emulation of a classic electric piano something like a Rhodes keyboard but it's a lot more than that This is a really lovely GUI that you're met with here. This is very similar to the Teenage Engineering OP1. This is the electromagnetic and pickup response parameter here, and it's like a balance control. So we can change our sound like this, and you can see the graphics correspond. So this is the balance between the pickup and electromagnetic and electrostatic coil. So it's just a character that you can give to the actual sound. The next page is bell noise, so you can tr control the amount of bell that is being heard in this sound. You've got tuning, key tracking, dry, dry forward slash PU, I'm not, or pickup I assume that is. Decay, volume, key tracking. We've got noise, frequency, attack, random, decay, mix and key tracking. We've got a setup page, we've got the polyphony again, we've got master volume, velocity level, velocity tone, velocity attack, tremolo, tube and chorus, so tremolo, tube and chorus, we've got rate, sync or free, mode, pan or depth, we've got uh, tube, drive, headroom, saturation and output, and we've got chorus, rate, depth and mix. Next page, we've got a dedicated delay again. We've got time, feedback ratio, free and sync, we've got damp control, high pass filter, resonance, resonant frequency, mix and width. And the last control that we've got is a spring reverb effect. So there's pre delay, diffusion, time, width, mix, and low cut. So as you can see guys, these three plugins for standalone MPC Live and MPC X, just a game changer. It really does show that Akai are on it and hopefully next year, maybe Air Technology or even some other third party developers will be developing some very interesting plugins. There might be a limit to how many instances of these plugins you can use. Uh, I would just say it's just a case of checking your CPU and memory. I have no idea and I've had no time to fully test any of this out.
So for every one of these new three plugins, we can save and load them. So we can make some changes to this patch or we can choose the initialize patch, um, which is here. So we've now initialized that patch. We can now save it to a location of our choice. Um, we can also load it back in at a later date or into a different project which is really great. So the actual presets, there's tons of them. So if we double tap on the preset field here, so we've got default and then we've got a load of different folders here that are full of all kinds of different preset sounds. And this is the case for tube synth and baseline. So all three of these plugins come with a ton of presets. I've gone through some of them, some of them are great, some of them are okay, some of them are pretty decent. But I urge you to initialize and see what you can make from scratch because there's a ton of parameters here that you can mix and match. And if you get the right balance, you can create some really interesting sounds. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is Tube Digger, and I'm out.